About a year ago, I made this video on TSLY, the Yield Max Tesla Option Income Strategy ETF, which is a covered call ETF that pays a ridiculous amount of income to shareholders by writing covered calls on one stock and one stock only. Tesla. Now at the time, the fund had only been around for a few months and was the hot new thing for income seeking investors. And since then, it's actually become even more popular as we can see the fund's assets under management have absolutely exploded in the last year. And this isn't exclusive to TSLY either. Investors are also piling money into some of the other yield max funds that have come to market like CONY, which writes call options on Coinbase and NVDY, which writes call options on Nvidia. Now, like I said, when I first made the TSLY video, the fund had only been around for maybe like five or six months, so not a long period of time at all, but still, I was skeptical about it for a few reasons. First and foremost, my initial impression was that TSLY might be a yield trap. While covered call ETFs in general are sought after for their impressive yields, these yield max funds take it to a whole nother level. And at the time I'm recording this, TSLY has a distribution yield of over 60%, which is the highest I think I've ever seen. Now, the second thing I wasn't too crazy about was the expense ratio, and I still feel the same way about it today. From the fund's perspective, is you're paying just about a 1% annual expense ratio, which means that if you have $10,000 invested in accounting for a 5% annual return, you'd be paying $101 in that first year, and by the end of the third year, you'd be out over $300 in expenses. When it comes to ETFs, a 1% expense ratio is most definitely on the higher end, but I will say, if this fund was able to sustain its current distribution without any tomfoolery, then I think a 1% expense ratio would be fair. The fund managers most definitely would have earned it. But that brings me to the third thing that initially turned me off from TSLY and still has me a bit uncertain today. I'm not sure if the fund will be able to sustain such crazy amounts of income over a long period of time. Like we mentioned, TSLY is a covered call ETF, so it's able to pay out such a large amount of income by writing call options on the equity that it targets, which in this case is Tesla. However, this isn't your standard covered call strategy. TSLY actually writes what are called synthetic covered calls, which allows them to basically replicate a traditional covered call strategy without actually owning any shares of Tesla in the fund. Instead of buying and owning the actual Tesla stock, the fund buys Tesla call options while it simultaneously sells Tesla put options. And by combining the purchase call options and the sold put options, the fund is able to artificially replicate ownership of Tesla stock without actually owning shares in the company. And then from there, it sells call options on Tesla to generate income. And it's important to note that not all of the income you receive as a shareholder will come from the options premiums. According to the fund's website, your income can be derived derived from a combination of ordinary dividends, capital gains, and return of capital, which by definition is not profit and it's not income. This is essentially just a portion of your original investment being given back to you, which reduces your cost basis in the investment. And I think a lot of investors get confused by this because to them, all they see is the paycheck. So it all seems like income, when it's really not. And this return of capital can diminish the fund's net asset value along with its share price over time and can result in some pretty substantial losses and we've actually seen it play out this way with TSLY in a pretty big way. If we take a look at TSLY's total return over here on Seeking Alpha across various time periods, starting with the year-to-date period so far in 2024, the fund is down over 31% and this includes dividends. Zooming out over the last year, TSLY is down almost 19%. So once again, a very big drop here. And if you would have invested 10 thousand dollars into TSLY back when it first came onto the market, even with all of the monthly income you would have received, no matter whether you reinvested dividends or not, you would have lost money. In fact, you would have lost more money reinvesting dividends, which is interesting to see. Furthermore, if we compare the total returns to those of the security that it targets, which is Tesla, we can see that from the fund's inception to today, you would have lost more money investing in the fund than if you would have just invested in Tesla. But with that said, I do understand that Tesla does not pay a dividend and people who invest in TSOY are likely doing so for the income. Still though, if it's income you're after, you would have been so much better off just investing in any of these other covered call ETFs right here over TSOY. In fact, out of the bunch, this is the only one that lost money and it did so by a considerable amount. So overall, the returns have been pretty abysmal, but truth be told, I don't think that most people who buy into this fund even care about the total returns. If they did, I don't know why they would put their money into it. And I have no data behind this, but my guess is that people who choose to invest in something like TSOY, do so just for the high yield, which goes against the number one rule of dividend investing, don't chase yield. But easier said than done, I know. I think most people see this 
50% yield and the trap is set. It's so easy to be drawn in by this, but you've got to look deeper than the yield and you need to be confident that you're not putting your money into a yield trap. And one easy way to determine whether or not this is a yield trap is to just look at the dividend history. If the dividend payments are staying flat over time or if the dividend payments are going up over time, which is the most ideal, then you're probably good to go. But if the dividend payments are declining and if the dividend payment per share is getting lower and lower as time goes on, then that's a pretty clear sign to stay away. And to illustrate this a bit more, let's compare these two dividend history charts. Here on the left, we have stock ABC, and on the right, we have stock XYZ. Now in this hypothetical example, let's say that you were forced to pick just one of these. And the one that you pick, you have to hold on to it for five years. The stock market is gonna close for five years and you won't be able to make any changes to your portfolio. So you've gotta hold on to it. And without knowing what either of these stocks are with this very incomplete picture you're working with, which one would you rather own? Just at a glance, which one do you think will better compound your money over time in this five year period? And which one do you think is more likely to grow your wealth in this five year period? I mean, to me, it's a pretty easy decision. I'd go with stock XYZ there on the right. I mean, why wouldn't you? Now stock ABC, the one on the left is obviously TSOY. This is their dividend history chart. And with what sound reasoning would you choose to invest in that over this other option here? You know, if dividends are what you're after, why would you rather invest in the one that pays you less dividends over time instead of the one that pays you more dividends over time? I don't really understand that. And I don't bring this up to be facetious. I'm not trying to be a smart aleck or anything like that. I'm really not. I'm just genuinely trying to understand the case for this as a good investment beyond just the dividend yield because I don't get it. As we've seen across the board, TSOY has not been kind to shareholders and the value destruction has been so bad that a couple months ago, the fund announced a one for two reverse stock split, which essentially is where they reduce the number of shares outstanding and adjust the share price up to account for the lower number of shares. So if you had 200 shares of TSOY before the split, afterwards you had 100 shares and the net asset value of those shares along with the distribution payment per share was adjusted up by the same degree. So the amount you had invested didn't change and your monthly distribution payments didn't change either, which might make you think, what was the point of doing that? Well, one reason they may have done this reverse split is to boost the share price. Like we said, the share price doubled and some stock exchanges have minimum price requirements that you need to meet in order to be listed on that exchange. And if the share price falls below that requirement, if the share price gets too low, the stock could be delisted. This means that less people will be able to buy into the fund, which will result in less assets under management and therefore less fees generated for the fund managers, which in my opinion is the main reason investment products like these even exist. I think funds like TSOY end up building more wealth for the fund creators and the fund managers than they do for the actual shareholders of the fund. Investment products like these that advertise high yields have been around for ages and the reason they keep coming out with new ones is because they know that human nature doesn't change. People will always want the shortcut. You know, they'll always want the magic pill and you can't blame them. They'll always want what they want. They'll want more of it and they'll want it now. And that's why funds like TSOY will continue to exist and will continue to make money for the people who create them. And the thing is, truthfully, I have no dog in this fight. You know, in saying all of this, I'm not trying to disparage anyone. I'm certainly not trying to offend anyone and I'm not trying to talk down on the way that others invest. I think we're all on the same team here. We're all after the same thing. All of us are just trying to build wealth. You know, we're all trying to live off of dividends and reach financial freedom and we're all trying to do it the best way we know how, but I don't personally think TSLY is it. And believe it or not, I hope I'm wrong. I seriously do. I hope that everyone makes a lot of money from this and I hope this is the first time in history that something is not too good to be true. But by every measurement, from everything I can see, this fund just looks like a big fat yield trap and is the latest iteration of the new shiny object. With that said though, to be fair, so far some of the other yield max funds like CONY and NVDY have done pretty well since inception. And I would imagine this will continue to be the case so long as the underlying stocks, Coinbase and Nvidia continue their strong performance. But as soon as that changes, and as soon as the underlying stocks go down in price, I think we'll see these funds go the same way as TSOY. And I think over time, the TSOY situation will just keep getting worse. But once again, I hope I'm wrong. And overall, I think you're better off investing in companies that have a proven track record of delivering desirable returns and increasing amounts of dividend income like the five stocks I'm telling you about in this next video right over here. These are all great companies that actually have a history of outperforming the market. And I think they're all ones that you can buy and just hold on to forever. So click right over here to check them out and I'll see you in the next one.